This is episode 492 of the AWS podcast, released on December 8th, 2021. Good day, everyone. Simon here with a quick pre-podcast message. Episode number 500 of the AWS podcast is coming up. We have a very special episode planned for you with lots of special guests, but we'd love to hear from you. If you'd like to contribute some audio to share, maybe your perspective on the podcast, um, how you've used it, etc., we'd love to hear from you. If you visit adibus.amazon.com slash podcast slash adibus dash podcast, you can see there's a button on that page and it says submit questions and feedback. This lets you upload your own audio to us. So we'd love to hear from you. Drop us a note and we'd love to include you in the episode. Keep on building. Podcast confirmed. Welcome to the official AWS podcast. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to another episode of AWS Launch. I'm Nikki, your host, as per the usual. And today is a very special episode. We're going to be talking about something very fun, a new service that AWS is launching. And I'm joined by Bala Thekadot, and he's the principal PMM for a new service called AWS Private 5G. Hi, Bala. Hey, Nikki. How are you doing? Very good. Super excited. Excited excited about your new service, I imagine? Yes, absolutely. All right. So this is a completely brand new service. What in the world is AWS Private 5G? Tell us about it. So AWS Private 5G is a new service that lets enterprises set up their own private 5G network within their facilities, you know, their enterprise campuses or for airports or any such contained private campuses. You can set up your own private 5G network. And you can do that very simply with a few clicks in the console. You essentially are ordering a 5G network using a console. People never really think about uh, 5G networks as something that they can privately own and build very easily. And with this service, that's what we are going to do. We are going to let enterprises build their own private cellular network for their campus connectivities. Wow. Okay. This is fascinating. A lot of questions come to mind. First off, like, uh, let's just talk a little bit about why an enterprise might want to build their own private 5G on their campuses. Like, don't they have Wi-Fi? Like, what would be a, you know, reason for a, an enterprise to have this need? Yeah, absolutely. This is usually the one of the first questions we get, right? Why do we need private 5G? There is enough Wi-Fi connectivity. So this is not really meant as a replacement for your Wi-Fi networks, right? Most enterprises are looking at private 5G or private cellular networks not to replace their existing Wi-Fi network. It's more meant to augment what they already have. And there could be multiple reasons why they want to do it. First, you know, it could be just for coverage reasons. If you have a large campus, uh, especially with outdoor areas like loading docks or, you know, factory floors that are large, it's very easy to get long-range coverage, long-range reliable coverage with cellular technology than when you, when you compare it to Wi-Fi. Especially if you have a lot of applications that have mobility scenarios where, you know, you have trucks that are moving across the factory floor ferrying inventory, right? So in these mobility scenarios, cellular technologies are very good for handovers and they're much reliable in terms of getting connectivity in that scenario. It could be, you know, you don't have to install so many access points to get the required coverage because cellular technologies have long range coverage. So that's one reason. Um, so you can fill in the gaps, basically. So you can fill in the gaps. Right? It's better coverage, reliable coverage. Then there's there, the, there are other reasons where, you know, you just have a lot of devices to connect. 5G especially provides you a very high density of connection. So you could connect millions of devices within a, in a given coverage area compared to existing LTE or even Wi-Fi technology. So if you have applications that are connection intensive, you have thousands and hundreds and thousands of sensors to connect. IoT then devices. Using, IoT device, industrial IoTs are industrial IoT is a very good use case of why you would need a private 5G network to connect those devices. And then there are applications that require really low latency and high bandwidth connectivity, right? 5G is, you know, the two big benefits that people usually associate with 5G are low latency connectivity and high bandwidth connectivity. So if you have applications that need devices to connect to each other with very low latency, for example, in a factory floor, again, smart manufacturing applications, you're using cameras to take images and you need it to be analyzed 
to detect faults on a production line. You need that data to travel between devices and applications really fast. So in those low, for those low latency connectivity, 5G becomes a really good use case. And what then, about for like mobile testing as well? Like if you're an enterprise developing a big mobile application, could that be another use case? Yeah, it could be, you know, if, if then that way it makes, you know, you are essentially testing applications that you're building to sell on public 5G networks on a private 5G network, right? So you can you can definitely develop applications for 5G networks much faster if that's one of the use case you have. But, you know, there's another use, another reason why people would also want um, to, to have in private 5G connectivity within their enterprises. And that is, you know, if you want really reliable connectivity, if you are connecting a lot of mission critical applications where you cannot afford to have channel interference, so in those cases, you know, the, the reliability that 5G offers is also a very good reason why you would want to consider a private 5G network for your campus. Really interesting. So, I mean, as a person that only, you know, knows about 5G because I pay for it through my cell provider, can you talk a little bit or explain how it is that we even are able to offer such a service to our customers? You know, how do we how do we get the cell service or the 5G network to be able to give them a private network? How does that work? So, you know, so there are, there are two parts to, to building that 5G network, right? You have the radio network that you have to set up on premises. And then there's the, what we call as the 5G core. That's the, you know, the, 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 the basic switching technology that uh, 5G mobile networks have. So when customers order this 5G, uh, AWS private 5G, what we do is we ship them the equipment uh, that they need to set up the on-premises connectivity. So there is a radio unit that we ship. That's the one that you connect to get the wireless signal within your campus. And then there's is that, it big? the back. It's not big. It's, you know, think of it as very similar to a, a Wi-Fi access point, maybe a little bigger. Okay. But, okay. but it's, you know, it's a small unit that you set up um, and that provides you the signal to cover the, the campus, right? And Depending on how big a campus you want, you might need one or two of those. But then they all connect back to the the core five G software that is running on on an AWS platform. Now that that software can run on um, you know on premises if you want. If we we will ship it in an outpost to your server, or it could also run in the in the AWS region. And once you once you get the equipment, you power on the the radio base station, right? The configuration is already pushed, and so you don't really need to do anything. The software auto configures, and your signal is active. And then all you need to do is plug in your SIM card or put in the SIM cards into your devices, and you know you should be connected. So how does the network actually travel? Like I know it usually you use like cell phone towers to you know distribute the network. But in this case, is that little radio device actually distributing the entire network for the whole area or? Correct. So that, that radio base station or the small cell unit that you power on, that is the one that sends the radio signals to cover the, the campus. What and is the coverage on that? Like how far can it go? So, you know, coverage usually, you know, there's no definite number you put, right? It depends on uh, on a multitude of, uh, you know, how much, um, how is your campus situated? Is it outdoors? Is it indoor? Do you have many walls? So there are a lot of reasons that affect how long or how what the range of your coverage is. Right? It usually never is a, a, a fixed number, but it is definitely large enough that it covers a, a, a pretty big swath of area without having to have repeaters. So especially yeah. if you, you know, so you can definitely cover the parking lot. So you can definitely cover the, the loading right. docks once you set it up indoors. Right, and so that, yes. Yeah, so you asked me how the the coverage does, right? So that base station is what transmits the wireless signal and covers the the area that you specified to be covered. Got it. And you know, usually when you talk about five G, you always hear about spectrum. First of all, what is spectrum, and uh, what spectrum does this these private networks operate on? So, so spectrum are those, you know, it's it's that invisible radio frequencies that wireless signals travel over. And spectrum in most countries, most places, everywhere, it is regulated because a lot of people use that wireless frequency for a lot of things, right? There's, you know, TV broadcasts happening, there's satellite communications right. happening, there are military communications happening. 
So for 5G, there's a specified set of frequencies on which 5G operates. Now, um, you know, the F in the in the United States, FCC uh, owns the spectrum and they auction regulates it off that. and kind of regulates that and they auction it off and people can, you know, telecom service providers buy that in that in that uh, in that auction. But they've also set aside a certain set of frequency called CBR, a citizen broadband radio service, which is essentially used on a first come first serve basis, right? So it is called the unlicensed spectrum. So by default, AWS private 5G runs in that spectrum. So, you know, you Got could, it. you still need to, you know, when you, when you, when you power on the system and you uh, go to the console and acknowledge that you received the, the equipment before it powers on, it asks you to, to enter the location where you are installing this equipment. And that is to make sure that you have the permissions to use that spectrum at that place for that specified amount of time. So there's a procedure to do that, but essentially you operate in that unlicensed spectrum by default. Now, if you're a big enterprise and you have purchased spectrum from FCC, uh, in a, you, know, you could bring your own spectrum and we can operate this network in that spectrum. Or you know, if you want to, or if you're in a region where you cannot use the CBRS spectrum, uh, for example, you're near a military facility or some other reason where it is restricted to use that frequency, then we can work with uh, our telco partners or communication service provider partners to get you uh, this network running with a license spectrum that one of our partners own. Interesting. Really awesome. So, you know, there are other uh, providers of private LTE and also private 5G networks how does AWS private 5G, how are our offerings different, I guess, from those existing providers? Yeah, so I think, you know, so the private LTE and private 5G networks have been around for, for some time now. Definitely private LTE networks have been talked about for quite some time. One of the biggest pain points that we still have with, uh, with setting up these private networks that it is, it is really time consuming and effort intensive to plan and plan this network and then uh, procure all the components from different vendors, integrate it, and then right. set this up network, right? So most of the times these networks were typically uh, built using similar ways the public 5G networks or public LTE networks are built, which means you have to plan for, you, do the ra you have to do the radio planning, you have to decide how much capacity you need, you have to design upfront how many devices you would connect. Then you would have to go negotiate, um, you know, all the different components. So you have to go to a radio vendor to talk about the the radio network part. You have to go and find the software that provides you the the 5G core. Then integrate it all together, um, and you start paying for the the entire network that you're pre-dimensioned. Right? And in many cases, the pricing mechanism is also, you know, if you if you go if you look at traditional um, cellular networks, there's always a per device charge. So you are always charged on how many devices you connect to that network, right? So those are right. those are some of the ways the networks are built today. What we have done is we have completely turned around some of those models uh, in the way the networks are built, the network are scaled, and the networks are priced, right? So this is probably the first time you could log on to a console, call a few APIs, and order a 5G network, right? You never really think of a 5G network is something you can order online. No, <laughs> definitely not. So th this is, you know, so this is, in that sense, we are doing something very different here. So we are letting customers go onto a portal and say, you know, I, I need to set up a 5G network in this location and I need to connect 100 devices. And all they have to do is say, you know, this is the location. I want you to send the equipment. These are the number of SIM cards I want and we send you the equipment. So you don't have to do all those upfront radio planning and radio frequency planning and all those things. So you can get started very small. So once we ship you the equipment, you can install the network, um, you can connect your devices and applications and see if this is the right, you know, five. You, do you need a 5G network? Is there a business reason for me to have this network? You can validate all those things. And then when you're ready to order more, you log on and say, okay, I need 100 more devices and I need one more radio base station because I need to have a better coverage, right? So this idea of starting small and then growing after you validate your requirements and you know that you need this device or you know even evaluate your return on investment on those uh, on this on this network you can do that after you have 
you know, you can do that validation first, then scale up the network, right? That is not something that people are used to today. You have to buy a big network and then just hope that it right. meets your capacity. So that's one, one and reason. And there's a lot of setup. There's a lot of setup. And two, there's absolutely no, you know, system integration and uh, large um, customization that you require, right? So when, when we ship you equipment, it is pre-configured, pre-integrated, pre-tested. All you have to do is power up and you should get everything up and running. So it is very simple. It's very simple. It's just like setting up a Wi-Fi network, right? You don't have to do a lot of so pre-configuration, right? And then the third, we have completely eliminated that per device pricing. So it doesn't matter how many devices you connect. You say, you know, if you want to order a thousand SIM cards, we will ship you a thousand SIM cards. We are charging you per the capacity you use, right? So if if your core is running in the region and we are shipping you a, a, a small radio base station, we are going to charge you a flat rate per hour for that coverage. And you can connect as many devices as you want. We are not going to charge you a per device charge. So it's very... So the pricing is like much more, much more. Like it's very transparent. Like it's clear. You know, yeah. you if you are especially if you have like uh, IoT intensive applications where you are adding more devices and more sensors to your network every day, you don't have to worry about this getting exponentially costly because you can kind of keep connecting as many devices as you want. We are still charging. So for the throughput, right? So we are looking at how much right. total traffic you are using, not how many devices you have connected. So question for you, do you ever see this, you know, being used beyond just the enterprise, like the consumer, like I can think of a few consumer use cases and also just like, you know, there are large events that probably would love to take advantage of this that happen, you know, maybe not necessarily, you know, always near a 5G network or, you know, there's a concert and they hand out IoT devices to everyone. I can think of like a million use cases yeah. where, you know, beyond the enterprise, they might want to take advantage of this. Do you see it being used beyond the enterprise? Yeah, absolutely. I think this is, you know, uh, when we say enterprises, we mostly, you know, that's the first thing that comes to mind because it's a close private on-premises facility where you can set this up. But it is equally valid. You could, you know, I could definitely see stadiums, airports using this to set up sure. connectivity within the airports. Um, event venues, definitely uh, educational institutions, university campuses. Yeah. So any places where you have a, essentially a campus, it doesn't have to be an enterprise campus, like a privately owned facility, campus, they can definitely right. definitely use the same uh, same setup, right? And, and it's easy enough where, you know, a, someone that's completely non-technical could also just set it up as well. It sounds like it's so simple. You just, it sounds like it's like almost like setting up a, a, a Wi-Fi. Exactly. And it is, and you know, you can scale it dynamically. So you are not bound to a, a big network that you purchase, right? If you know that you're going to have temporary increases in capacity needs, you can bump up the capacity that we should bill you for for just that amount of time. So, and you can scale back to you know a, a flat default rate of 100 megabits per second, right? Uh, 100 Mbps traffic is what you want to go generally. Then that's what we right. charge you for. But then you know you know that this weekend you're going to have some major event you need more capacity then just for that weekend you can bump up the capacity that's awesome and then obviously on the reverse of that you can also lower your capacity as well if you're going to have less yeah yeah so it's, it's very easy to scale it's not you know it's it's that cloud consumption model that we have always um, advocated for compute and storage right we are now bringing that same now applying to 5G. exactly we are bringing the same cloud consumption model to 5g networks so that is a big differentiator, right? It's a, it's a pay-as-you-go for a 5G network. So what about, um, you know, partnerships? How does the partnerships work with, you know, other telecommunication companies or service providers? And how can they actually take advantage of this service? Absolutely. I think that's a very good question. Um, so I already talked about one scenario where, where we partner with telcos or the communication service providers, right? Especially if they want, if you want to operate this network in a spectrum that that is owned by the that telcos, is, exactly. Right. So naval, military, okay. or for some reason you're not allowed to, to use the CBS spectrum, then you want to use it on a license spectrum. And then there will be many op many scenarios where enterprises already have this existing relationship with the the telcos, and in that case, we could you know we could work with them to use that relationship and their expertise to offer enterprises a managed uh, offering for 5G, right? So uh, 
uh, we would have our partners manage and run maintain this network for enterprises you know not all enterprises would want to run their own network even if we tell them it's super easy to do this you can do it on there there are right. many people who said you know i just want somebody to own and run and maintain this network so the partners would own and run and maintain and set exactly. it up exactly it's a managed it service offering service it's a, it could be a managed offering that is built on aws private 5g right? so we definitely think this will help telecom service providers to quickly build the smaller private 5G network for their enterprises. Today, telcos already offer private 5G network to, to enterprises, but they have to custom build each one of this network and it takes them a lot of time. So we, we definitely think that, you know, working with us and that partnership with, uh, with us can help them accelerate the number of private 5G networks they can build for their enterprise customers much faster. So they can right. use this service as the base to build their private 5G networks and offer it to their enterprise customers. Right? So we will be the, you know, they can use this as the the building block for building their own private 5G networks uh, that they sell to enterprises. Right? So there's a partnership aspect to it. And then again, you know, so that's the partnership with the, the telecom service providers. And then we also work with uh, 5G software vendors, right? The people who are provide the the vendors who are providing the radio software and the five G core software. So you know, right. I do see scenarios where people there. would say, you know, we want to work with this five G core vendor, and can we build a private five G network that is built on this five G core? And that's something we can accommodate, right? Because this is essentially uh, the the configuration on this is much more flexible. That's really nice that you can just have that kind of integration and, and swap yeah. out. Um, I feel like I want my own 5G private network. <laughs> 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 like, I know that's like probably not like a thing people say, but like I kind of do. See, like, see that is the beauty of this, out. right? If you decide that, oh, I need a private 5G network because, you know, I have a large home and I have a big yard and I think I want a private 5G network. You can mm -hmm. do that now, right? Uh, because you can yeah. start as small as you want. Maybe you just order one base station and 10 sims, but yeah, you can do that. <laughs> <laughs> I kind of want to. Okay, so just to recap, um, you know, how easy it is. So if I want to order this, you know, I just go into the console and I can order it and then they send me the radio access point box and then... Um, you power it on. And then it's just to power yeah, it you on. You power it on. Set up the sims. Correct. Yeah, so you power it on. And then you go back to the console and you have to click a I acknowledge button so that we know that you received it. And when you received it, uh, we start pushing the configuration and it does whatever it needs to do and the uh, signals get powered on. And, and then, yeah, then you just you know, plug in your cool. SIM cards I mean, into your device. You gift a private and, 5G network now too. <laughs> and then you can go into a console and actually see all the uh, devices that you've connected. So it shows up on your console, all the connected devices, and then you can set up into access groups, right? You can say, you know, this belong to this department and they cannot access applications from this device, wow. right? So you can, so that's, you know, I, I forgot to mention that that's one of the, one of the cool differentiators we have, right? We can integrate this into our identity management models, right? So your IAM systems can, so you can have the same governance model for your connected devices as you have for your existing IT infrastructure. Wow, that's actually really powerful, especially for the enterprise. So that was a- Yeah, yeah very granular control. You can- Really handy. Thing. Exactly, you can, you can define on a per device basis, you know, what they can access, how long they can access, you know, very, very granular security policy. I'm already thinking policies. about my private 5G network. <laughs> And all the ways I'm going to block. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, well, this service is extremely interesting. I feel like, yeah, it's just, it's a very fascinating service and a very powerful thing that we're now offering. Is there anything you feel like we missed in covering today that you would want our listeners to know? Not really. I think we covered uh, a lot of introduction and uh, and the basics of this service but i'm i'm excited for our listeners to go and learn more on the website i'm excited to see how this service evolves and then also how it gets used you know beyond just the enterprise campus use case like i'm excited to go to an event that it has a private 5g network powered by aws like i think that would be really cool well, thank you so much for coming on the show today. I want to ask you, how can our customers get in contact with you if they have questions about AWS Private 5G? 
So you can reach me at, you can message me on LinkedIn. It's Bala Thakirat, my first name, last name together. My Twitter handle is the same, at Bala Thakirat. Or you could reach me at my Amazon email address. It's Bala Tech, B-A-L-A-T-H-E-K at Amazon.com. Awesome. Yeah. Well, he just provided three different yes, ways. Yes, I definitely him, so want yeah. to make sure that anybody who has any questions about this can reach out. And we are really excited to bring this uh, this really cool product to market. It's it's going to change the way. Honestly, so it's going to cool. change the way you know private five G networks will be built and consumed. Right. It's we are essentially democratizing five G networks here. Yes, you are. This is so cool. I'm um, I'm actually very excited to see how I can set up a private 5G network. Well, again, thank you so much for coming on the show today. It was a pleasure talking to you about this new service, and I'm definitely excited to see the future of it and how it evolves. So remember, guys, you can always reach me on Twitter. I answer all my DMs. My handle is knee, like your knee, and a key. That's K-N-W-E-K-E-Y 23. Always love to hear your feedback about the podcast or the service or anything else you have in mind. Otherwise, we'll catch you guys next time. Thank you so much, Bala, for joining us again. Thank you, Nikki. And keep on building. Episode number 500 of the AWS podcast is coming up. We have a very special episode planned for you with lots of special guests, but we'd love to hear from you. If you'd like to contribute some audio to share, maybe your perspective on the podcast, um, how you've used it, etc., we'd love to hear from you. If you visit adibus.amazon.com slash podcast slash dash podcast, you can see there's a button on that page and it says submit questions and feedback. This lets you upload your own audio to us. So we'd love to hear from you. Drop us a note and we'd love to include you in the episode.